Hello. In this video, we are going to discuss about the concept of roles in Drupal. Now, as we already know, Drupal is a CMS which allows us to register multiple users. Now, what is the concept of role, how that can be applied and why that has to be used is the point of discussion. Now, let us say we are going to use Drupal to build a site where a lot of content is to be managed. For example, let us say you are running a weekly magazine or something from a Drupal based system. Now, obviously, a single person will not be able to handle each and every aspect of the website. Or let us say just in terms of the content that will be generated or the articles that are to be written, we cannot expect only one person to administer each and everything. So obviously we will have more people registered on our website and these people will be writing some articles. Let us say we will call these people as authors. They will be getting the details of the article, topic, content or whatever is their source, they will generate those articles and those articles could be on basically different topics, science and technology, sports, agriculture, weather, whatever you want to say. Now, whenever an article is written, we don't want that article to be published immediately. There could be some kind of rules, regulation, restrictions or maybe in very, very simple terms, you may want to rephrase some statements, sentences to a grammar check and many other points on that. So these authors on our website will be able to write an article or create a content for the article using say basic page or the article content type itself, but they should not be able to publish it right now. We want someone else to approve these articles. Let us say this person or maybe two or three people who should have the capabilities of reading these articles and once they have corrected it, they should be able to publish these articles. So they will be having a bit more higher rights than the people who are authors. So let us call these people as editors and these editors should have the rights to view these articles which are unpublished and they should be able to further publish these articles after doing the grammatical check. So the idea here is to have roles, right? Roles in Drupal allow us to set permissions or capabilities or access rights that what one person can do. So now if you are in Drupal and if you go to people section, fine, you will notice that there is a user, the user status and the role is mentioned. Here you can see the role as administrator. We have seen initially while we were installing the first user that gets created is the administrator. Now administrator is a person who has the whole rights of the Drupal based site. The person can do anything. Now obviously we will not want to give the administrators access right to each and every person. So we would want to have a fine tuned control over what a person can do. So people can be simply registered or added by adding a user. Obviously that can be done by the administrator or we can enable user registration automatically. That means we can allow people to register on their own, open the registration system which also we had seen initially that usually when you are developing your site, you disable the user registration. Open uh, user registration is disabled. User registration should be done only by the administration. Once we have worked upon a certain type, we will allow that thing. So that is a basic decision that you will be taking later on. Okay. So now what needs to be done is that we need to create certain roles. Drupal allows us to create more roles, but by default it has some roles. So there is an anonymous role, which is basically any user who's visiting our website or in simple terms, a non-registered, non-logged in user on our website. Any user who is having an account on our website and is logged in will get the role of authenticated user by default. Administrator needs to be assigned to a person who is 
logged in into the website or who is registered on the website. Fine. These changes of roles can be done by the administrator or we can use some modules which decides when the user is getting registered, which role should be provided them by default that we will see later on. So if we look at this here, these are the predefined roles. Now you can either edit each and every of these role one by one or let us have a look at the permissions. So role basically defines a group or a label which has an associated set of permissions that what a person can do. So over here, if you look at it, these are the permissions or whatever the things that we can do on our website. And on this side, you can see anonymous user, you can see authenticated user and you can see administrator. And whatever is checked means that role is allowed to do that work. Right? So ban is a module. If you remember, we had enabled initially. So ban module can be used by administrator. In fact, if you will see everything is ticked for the administrator. Administrator has a complete right to do each and everything on the website. If we compare it with the anonymous user and authenticated user, you will see certain differences. A lot of things are not allowed like authenticated user or anonymous user cannot use the ban IP setting or administrator blocks and all, which is obviously understandable. Here, if you see anonymous user can view co comments, authenticated user can post comments, skip comment approval and also bit more. Anonymous user cannot post comments. You can enable this if you want. Similarly, there are further settings what different people can do on our website. Fine. Obviously, the authenticated user has some more rights over here. Then compared to your anonymous user, fine. So what is to be done here in our requirement is that we can create more rules and set up these permissions as per requirement. Once a role and permissions are set, a new user or existing user can be assigned with that particular role. So when that user logs in, that user gets those defined access rights. That is the idea behind a role and the set of permissions associated with the role. So this is how you can fine tune access control to different people or group of people who will belong to a particular role by using the concept of roles and the associated permissions. The only thing that you should remember as a preference is that the administrative role should not be assigned to multiple people, though this is not a rule, but this is a preference mechanism where there should be only one administrator and other access rights. If you want, maybe some administrative level, you should create more roles and provide the limited set of administrative work, like say block content management or whatever is there, you can provide it to certain set, but it should not be given the whole administrative rights. This is a generic understanding. Again, I will say it's not a rule, but it's a generic understanding for the purpose of security. So in the next video, we will see how we can add a user to our system as well as how to manage or create a role and then assign it to a particular user.